Hello, Pokemon Masters, Berkey Fatobi here, and I'm just keeping my voice and energy down a little bit because it's the Japanese celebration of Obon, and where I am behind me, what well, it might look like the Dragon's Den, but actually, this is Lake Biwa, known to you as the Lake of Rage. The Lake of Rage is home to one of my favorite and I think probably most solid Pokemon theories. It's a short one, but I wanted to share it with you as well as this incredible place. This Pokemon theory is known well by the community as a lot of people have come to the same conclusion, making me believe that this Pokemon theory is probably actually one of the few that is definitely real and intended by the creators. The Lake of Rage is one of my favorite places in all of Pokemon. It's beautiful and the home to, of course, the Red Gyarados, the first shiny encounter in all of Pokemon. Now, at the time, the reason that the Red Gyarados was red was actually because of forced evolution by Team Rocket's nearby radio waves that had made the Magikarp evolve into Gyarados, making it extra angry and extra orangey red. Of course, this doesn't really make sense in the context of other shiny Pokemon, but this was the reasoning. And an angry Gyarados is a terrifying thing. According to Pokedex entries in Shining Pearl, ancient literature suggests that there's a record of Gyarados that raised a village when violence flared. Pokemon Legends Arceus expands on this. Laventon, who is the writer of the Pokedex in this game, says, I suspect this Pokemon to be the true identity of a dragon written in ancient texts, which claimed that it raised an entire village with height white hot beams from its moor. The belief is that yes, north of Mahogany Town, there used to be a village where the Lake of Rage now stands. There are very few places in the Pokemon world that you can just fly to using the fly mechanic. It normally has to be a town or where there's a Pokemon center, but the Lake of Rage is an exception, despite the fact that through Sinnoh, there are three very important lakes that would be very convenient if we could just fly to them. The Lake of Rage is the one that you can. Additionally, in the debated development of Pokemon Gold and Silver, the Lake of Rage actually had a map that had a Pokemon gym. This was intended to be a village. I suspect that in the lore of the games in the past, this really was a village. This is where Old Mahogany Town once was before it was destroyed by Gyarados. Pokemon Legends Arceus, the game though, really expands our view on this. We have Commander Kamado and Benny. Now on Commander Kamado's desk is a picture of a woman in a white dress. She's nowhere to be seen in the game. Where did they leave from? Where did they come from? In the Japanese version of the game, Kamado actually speaks with Kansai Ben dialect, which is the dialect found most commonly around the Kyoto area of Japan, the area that inspired the Johto region. So he's from Johto, but I more specifically think he is from the area that is now the Lake of Rage, Old Mahogany Town, we'll call it. There is dialogue in the game from Benny, Commander Kamado's oldest friend. He says that he and Kamado saw their hometown burn down but to the ground by a Pokemon running amok and that they lost plenty of friends and comrades that day. When it comes to friends, I think it's not just friends, but also family, and that is the picture on Commander Kamado's desk. But when it comes to comrades, it suggests a level of militarism, a level of unity between them all in a time of violence. And that's just interesting because Gyarados' Pokedex entry, as I mentioned earlier in Shining Pearl, suggests that Gyarados raised a village when violence fled. Additionally, in Legends Arceus, that Pokedex entry written by Laventon says that Laventon suspects that Gyarados is the true identity of this dragon written about in ancient texts. And I think the reason that Laventon suspects that is because he's heard of Gyarados doing something very, very similar when he heard it from Commander Kamado after the destruction of his home in Johto. And there's one more bit of evidence that ties into all of this, and the fact that it's referred to as a dragon in Pokemon Legends Arceus. There aren't Magikarp statues on the top of the Galaxy Expedition building, and they were put there by Sanqua, an ancestor to both Karen of the Elite Four in Johto, but also Claire and Lance of the Gym Challenge and Elite Four. She was likely also part of the same dragon clan that worships in the Dragon Den, and one of the dragon Pokemon of Johto is Gyarados. Actually, in the Dragon Den, there are these big writhing snake-like dragons. Whether these are supposed to be Gyarados or Dragonair, we don't know. But we do know plenty of the dragon trainers in the gym, as well as Lance himself, use Gyarados as their ace Pokemon. Gyarados is considered a dragon. And Sanqua originally, before making the Magikarp statues adorning the Galaxy Hall, wanted to make them Gyarados statues. But I'm guessing, given Commander Kamado's feelings towards Gyarados, that was not gonna happen. Now, for the next part of this video, I want to move away from the Lake of Rage. While the Lake of Rage is an interesting story and it is one of my favorites, while researching for this video, there were so many other little tidbits and bits of lore to do with Gyarados and indeed Magikarp that felt so interesting it would feel wrong to not mention them. For example, when Mega evolving, Gyarados was often criticized for not gaining the dragon type given its relationship to Lance. It's even being used by Lance in the latest animated series. However, it gaining the dark type now in light of this theory makes a lot more sense. 
Pokemon have always thought of Gyarados as a particularly dark Pokemon. It also makes a featuring role on Lysander's team in the animated series as a shining version once again. And this idea of the red Gyarados or the shining Gyarados indeed being the result of radio waves from the tower in Mahogany Town actually ties into Team Rocket's wider plot in Goldenrod City where they try to take over the radio tower. Now, while we know that they want to use this tower to reach out Giovanni and resurrect Team Rocket, the radio director has a different concern. He says that Pokemon across the Johto region are in danger if Team Rocket have access to this radio tower. And I think it's because what the radio director knows that Team Rocket don't is that the power of these radio towers is really spectacular. It has the power to change the molecular structure of Pokemon, causing Pokemon to evolve and rampage. All the other towns and cities of the Johto region could become like the Lake of Rage. This is actually backed up in the Pokemon TCG lore, where electromagnetic waves are used by Holon in the search for Mew, and they alter the Pokemon's DNA, not forcing them to evolve, but instead altering their type and changing them. So we know that radio and electromagnetic waves can interfere with these Pokemon. I also can't not talk about Magikarp's Pokedex entry. The very first Pokedex entry from Red and Blue that says that in the distant past it was somewhat stronger than the horribly weak descendants that exist today. Why would Magikarp evolve to become so weak? And the answer is simple, it's because this Pokemon then becomes numerous. Magikarp is one of the most common Pokemon appearing in every single corner of the Pokemon world, apart from in the Unova region where Basculin seem to have won out over this species of Pokemon, but you can still find them at incredibly high levels in the nature preserve, including at level 100. Anyway, Anyway, I digress. This Pokemon is numerous, and that is its evolution strategy. By not investing so much energy and points into the strength of the Pokemon, it means that this Pokemon can focus on eating and of course reproducing. And with one of the lowest egg step counts to hatch, it means that this Pokemon can flourish basically anywhere. The survival strategy of this Pokemon is that even if it becomes prey for certain Pokemon, like we see in New Pokemon Snap, it being swooped up by Pidgeot, even if it is to become the main prey source for most Pokemon in the wild, there are just so many of it that it simply cannot become extinct. The next part of the evolutionary strategy is even more simple. While a lone Magikarp can't fend for itself, nor can a batch of a hundred, a hundred defended by one single Gyarados means that all of those Magikarp are likely to continue to reproduce and evolve further on into Gyarados. Variations in its evolutionary strategy can be seen in what is effectively the first regional variant, other than perhaps Arbok and its many hooded patterns, that being in Feebas, a Hoenn Pokemon that looks exactly like Magikarp. This Pokemon evolves into the beautiful Milotic and is clearly related to Magikarp and Gyarados, with them being parallel evolution lines. Feebas is, well, the ugly duckling Pokemon. So this Pokemon is less likely to reproduce. However, it's also less likely to become the prey of any particular Pokemon because it looks less delicious to eat. The idea of a regional variant for Magikarp as well is not that far-fetched or sir-fetched or hang on, where's this analogy going? In Pokemon Legends Arceus, in many of the houses, you can find statues of Magikarp, but they are in fact of different Magikarp hanging over the cooking pots in the room. According to some leakers online, and I'm not sure how credible this is, there was supposed to be a regional variant of Magikarp introduced in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and so this would have been a hint for that Pokemon, which of course does not exist. There is of course the old classic theory that Magikarp and Dratini swapped evolution lines, and that Dragonite is somehow supposed to be an evolution to Magikarp, and that Gyarados an evolution to Dratini and Dragonair, given those serpentine bodies, and again, the connection to the Dragon Tamer Lance, but this makes no sense. Gyarados and Magikarp take very specific inspiration from the mythos of the carp that jumps over the waterfall and finds itself becoming a dragon. It's interesting to note that in this legend, the carp doesn't just jump over a waterfall, but specifically jumps through a Tory gate, and such a gate exists here at Lake Biwa, where I'm recording this video. Anyway, that was just excess Gyarados and Magikarp lore that didn't tie into this story, the story that I actually think happened. The story of Old Mahogany Town, a real town within the world of Pokemon's history, the home of Benny and Commander Kamado, destroyed by the rampaging Gyarados. Hello there, it's me, Professor Oak. This video is over, so please choose another one wisely and quickly. Bye bye. I owe the biggest debt of gratitude to those of you who have been supporting me over the years, including the big patrons of this month, New Orca, Michael Hornshoe, Lucas Gates, Jed Rubin, Charmander Ansible, and Anthony Lee. Thank you so much.